Magic Kingdom, where your dreams and your imagination always come true. With one of the variations in between from ride attractions to showtime, others are definitely totally the same. But which ride has the most? Let's find out on Son of Beast. Last time, I went to Disney's Magic Kingdom. This place gives it a hope and also with the amazing view of the main street and a closer look at Cinderella's castle. With amazing part of a land in between the Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, Frontierland, and Adventureland in between each row. And definitely, of course, we're an amazing part of the day here at Magic Kingdom. Of course, we did get to ride one of these attractions. And they're very different in between from the range of in between. There's so many of them that could definitely be honored of all the ride and attractions, along with shows, greeting characters from parades, and definitely a nighttime spectacular of the fireworks show, the world of the Disney Kingdom. So here are my rankings here as I will take a look who has the best part of the attractions ever. Let's take a look of how I rank each rides at Disney's Magic Kingdom. Now before we get into the top 10 rides, here are a few honorable mentions that didn't make the cut for the attractions. First we have is Mad Tea Party, a spinning wild cup of this attraction on a spinning ride. This is the only attraction that was ever been created by one of our teacup family attractions from each amusement park. But this one is the only one that is different here. Now is there a chance for the whole family to enjoy? And yeah, I really don't want to care about this attraction here. It might give me a little headache in between, but not to mention how this happened. It also has some uh, great roofs that will definitely block your shades off here, and you don't have to worry about the rain coming down. Well, if something happens here, if it rains on and then falls right from here in an instant, you know you would definitely be sorry about that one here. There's only attraction. Can definitely be detained that this is definitely a only smack cup tea ride than a spinning flat ride. But as always, you can just ride it if you want, but if you have some kids that aren't big enough to ride the attractions, go ahead and give this one a whirl. Next up is the Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Riding your favorite elephant means it's the same elephant of Dumbo. Flying across from in between from sky high, and definitely I rode this here two times before, but the third time won't be enough to make the answer. Yeah, I'm really that kind of serious because all of a sudden we really wanted to get away with this one, so I don't have to worry about riding an elephant that long. And yeah, I really do enjoy this attraction. Maybe I should move up to a bigger step, and either progress, it might be definitely the same thing that everybody really wants to be. So don't try to like mess anybody's up. They really wanted to get on this attraction. That's for your kids there too. You can definitely ride it if your kids are not big enough once again. Definitely like a mad teacup ride. It's the same thing as always too. Next is the Barnstormer. A total thrilling fight of the junior roller coaster like a great graffiti. This was a little bit different here because I'm not going to take a Barnstormer at this point. You see, this is definitely only for the kids who really want to get this attraction. Comparing it to other Junior Frill Seekers here, from this one at Six Flags Great America, Six Flags Magic Mountain, or even of course Six Flags Over Texas for sure, it didn't really feature anything like inversions or anything. It's only just a small time hill that justly comes along with another attraction. Another attraction, also an example for at Disneyland, is the Go Go Gadget Roller Coaster. It's definitely a junior thrill seeker who definitely really likes to get onto this one. And this could be located in the Toontown section here at Disneyland. So far, however, this definitely has to be the same part of this ride. Only one circuit allows for the great momentum of airtime. Yeah, I was expecting that the Barnstormer may not be a perfect choice for me to get on this attraction. So I don't have any words to say about this one. So there was not a lot of information. So. I'm going to have to step aside here and then take another look here instead. Next is Prince Charming Regal Carousel, the only carousel from the enjoyment back behind from its castle. I'm really sure about this attraction so much. It's definitely for the whole family to enjoy. 
right by the sword that you were getting the picture with. It's definitely a great background to get your pictures in, but it seems like it's kind of dark to do this that way because the light was glimming. And I know one thing, it may be tough though, but not to worry how this ever happens. So there isn't a lot enough information for this one, but it does turn out to be a great uh, attraction if you really like to step onto itself. I mean, it's your choice. You can definitely ride that one here with your kids and definitely your companies too. You might have a, all what you need to know for. Then we have the magic carpet of Aladdin at Adventureland. Yeah, I'm not going to care about this one. Flying high on the magic carpet is above from the Adventureland and you can definitely see the view here from in between from the Jungle Cruise and the family part of a treehouse. This is a little bit different than comparing it to the Dumbo the Flying Elephant because that one is a little higher from its length speed while this one was a little shorter with the tallest of the height. There's not much else to say about this one so I don't want to take it too much with the attraction by itself so let me just scoot it out of the way and let find another one the attraction that could definitely work for me because this one was definitely for kids. Yeah, I'm not going to give credits to this one at that point, so let me just go ahead and step aside here. I'm gonna have to move on to a different one with part of the attraction to get over with. Then it's Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. You travel through a hundred acres of wood and definitely on a hungry pot. Honey pot, I should say. Why am I saying honey pot? That has to be look like a real honey inside. But don't get me wrong, because honey looks like a honey, like this kind of a honey of your flavors if you just eat them right away. I mean, who really likes to take a good look out of it from Winnie the Pooh? You could definitely just taste it for yourself. I mean, no offense on this one, but there might be a lot of through traveling in time in between from the woods to meet with your favorite of the characters, including with your special favorite, Christopher Robin. If you've seen the movie of Christopher Robin on here, this is definitely the place for the whole family to watch and then take a good look in between from here. No, my last name's not Robin, okay? Just don't try to take note of that. And last but not least, we have is Jungle Cruise. This one is taking set sails here on the river to have a whimsical cruise from every part of an animal on an exotic river. Your host Skipper. I'm not really interested in doing this one to go on to this cruise attraction, but this really does turn out to be that the new movie of Jungle Cruise is already out. I think you should watch that one here and then compare it in between from each animals. I mean, they're definitely the same thing that I have always been seeing in this whole far. While there were new changes here for the Jungle Cruise scenes, there's so many others that turned out to be just like anybody. I mean, come on, man. Who really likes to have a good time with the Jungle Cruise and taking a little boat ride tour from a ferry boat from the parking lot to the entrance of the Magic Kingdom? I mean, this is a little different here, so don't get me wrong with that one. I'm a little uh, too much chaotic control to go right in between from each part of a ride. It's definitely a boat ride, for sure. You get the credits for this one, and I expected that this one should be okay to have your family have this attraction ready for you. Enough of being said, let's get on to the top 10 rides. Number 10. This one definitely takes up a great look of each part of each ride. But this is not a ride that you get on the boat. This is where you take a walkthrough attraction, Tom Sawyer Island. This is the only Sawyer Island that I have never been on this island here before. Taking a good look here in between the rivers and from the riverboat. I mean, this is very that different and nobody has ever done it before. And for me, I've never been in here before. This is definitely different than comparing it to one of each islands here, like from the Treasure Island here from New Jersey. I'm really sure that there might be too many things to go with that one. I'm not brave enough here. It looks like there are attractions might have caught and gone, but this really has to be something else here. I mean, there is nothing else to go with another look over on the other hand. If you're looking at Big Thunder Mountain over there, where the railroad is coming down, and you could spot on a train right from the tracks from the train here in the tunnel. I'm pretty sure that everybody's gonna be uh, like saying, what on earth am I doing on the island? I mean, nobody knows. You may not see rattlesnakes or alligators popping nearby, 
because there might not be one. They only just fill up with ponds, that's just it. But I don't see any rattlesnakes here or alligators nearby, but if you do see one, please let me know in the comment down here below. Number 9 is the Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. This is definitely the second part of this simulator of the attraction, taking on a whimsical water underwater of the sea, with your little mermaid and definitely the other characters, including the bad person, Ursula. I'm really not really gonna try to take notes on that one here. I've always spied out, Ursula is like so mean, not gonna help out, but to tell you what this all happens, this definitely turns out to be a very nice uh, theming hat play under the sea and part of your world or there might be another way that could definitely be a favorite uh, so long little mermaid here well, at least the girl i don't know if i said it right but don't be mindful of me i always just feel like this was an amazing underwater adventure great to be here on this attraction after disney's california adventure i've already got one a attraction where this really has gotten into a good one. Whimpical waters under the sea. I mean, who really likes to do that one here? Not my best wish here, but this will be okay if I like to take over it. And right next to it is a VR guest restaurant with Gaston's Tavern. I'm not gonna take a quick look over there, but I'm just gonna like try to skip this and let this next attraction go nearby. If you have the under the sea, make sure you have your bucket list on your next adventure for your park to enjoy. Number eight we have here, it's a small world. I mean, taking a boat tour around the Globo is definitely a very great place to be, but it really does turn out to be that you're just gonna love it most. I think your smaller children are gonna love it here too. Whatever they play one in between from the region of the country, they definitely know for sure. How act do you play? How are you going to be a press person to take it over from in between? How are you going to greet them in between? That's definitely the same thing like Epcot on the other hand of the World Showcase Center. But this is definitely the boatest ride that I ever ridden. What a great theming in between those continents here that does turn out to be just in between of India, China, Japan, or even some of the tropical sections here, including Mexico for sure. Of course, I've always really liked to see how this different region of the land turned to be. And in fact, if you really like this part of the boat ride, I think your smaller children are going to love it here too. They don't have to be afraid here to look over the view. And there are no zombies, I'm serious. This happened before the one in China that happened already. This is like over the creepy on the other hand. But this one, it's not going to scare you. They're definitely going to sing you along, so if you definitely want to get on the boat attraction, go ahead, give this one a whirl. But anyway, I don't have anything ever to share about this information about it's a small world, but great theming of the land. It turned out great. Let me know if you got on this attraction with your kids. They would love to hear from you. Number seven we have is the number one that turns to be a dark ride, Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin. There are so many of our uh, battle bots here in between the lasers, defeating everybody in here from in between from each part of the targets. My focus on this one was the laser, but I have a difficult time to find out how to fire it. Well, this isn't really the same thing comparing it to Battle for Metropolis here at Six Flags Great Adventure, or even Mid Men in Black here at Universal's Orlando Resort of Universal Studios Florida. But this one turned out to be different. Why is that? <laughs> well, this is very dead, insanely rough. How in the world are these targets are turning out to be just the same thing? Well, not to compare with the moving control on your hand, either moving your vehicle left or right. This is very dead serious. I'm not even kidding, because this really does turn out. Whenever you move your vehicle left or right, this is definitely what this really looks like. In between these zones, you can't feel the strength of yours. It's very that difficult to try to keep your balance in the target at all times. But I just felt like this wasn't just a good thing. I hope they make fixing new changes so far. Well, not a great ride, but definitely a good ride for sure. Yeah, I'm hoping the laser might be going bright because this is very uh, hard to see in between. Yes, Dad did beat me from this amazing score. 
And I have a terrible time to try to keep the targets from here. How in the world am I going to keep shooting until ready? I think the battle for Metropolis is a better one for me. So if you have an experience that you tried controlling it and you're thinking that you have a hard time, don't worry. It happens most of the time. That's what most people do. They try to get the targets off here. They can't find a laser. Well, if it's yours, you gotta hit it right away because there are targets that has Z's on that one. It's definitely the same thing like hitting the bad bot here on your final boss before departuring. But that's only the difference here that I would have experienced here. Even more. More bigger and Times Square. So if you have this attraction down, well, I'll be lucky enough for you. You definitely did great. Mission complete to infinity and beyond by Buzz Lightyear. Your Space Ranger pilot would congratulate you that you did the best. Well, I'll try to focus on the attentions here later from Battle for Metropolis. Moving back to Fantasyland is number six. It's Peter Pan's flight. Land aboard. It's definitely going on a ship like you've never seen it before. Unlike the Maelstrom at Epcot, this one takes you on the flying of the journey into the sky. Everything you look down here below, this is definitely really different. Oh, no. And I'm not really saying... This is a different experience, but a different look of the land. When you're above the height of the limit, like E.T. Adventure, this is definitely the same thing, just like the one at Universal's Orlando Resort. But this is definitely the ship that takes you up across the height, looking down from the Neverlands in between, from the city of London. I mean, wow. This definitely does turn out to be a great scenic scene, like you're in the flying in the air. And definitely with Tinkerbell lifting you up board in the sky. Wow. Honestly, to tell you that one year, that was really cool. But most of the cases, we just got stuck up there. But don't worry, because now you can see everything. There's some good sights that you could take pictures of here. But don't just be mindful. Don't lose your phone on this ride. Just keep it right here with you. And if you really think that this attraction is definitely great, you're definitely going to love that one here, most and for all. And then on the other side, there's Peter Pan and the Cruise, along with Captain Hook and their bad guy bumblings. I'm not really in positive mood here, because Captain Hook, I disregard him. But for most of the cases, I feel like this is the best thing that happened. And at the ending of the scene, it looks like that, that Captain Hook just got, really got bitten up here. And then was there was an alligator or crocodile. I mean, I don't know if it's in between them, but I'm sorry for the apologies. But anyway, this is definitely the second one that I've just spotted on. Two alligators coming near for the ship and definitely from the ending of the scene. Get out of here. You're not supposed to be on any crocodile here, Captain Hook. I mean, I'm definitely not being honest for sure. Magical Journey to Neverlands is definitely your time to shine in. If you wanted to take on this ride, you must have your list down below because you will be entering with Peter Pan and the crew. Here are all these characters that will be flying off to the sky. Yeah, definitely with Tinkerbell, of course. You're going to definitely need everything with the scene, but you're definitely never going to believe this one. You're going to love it. Anyway, time to head on to number five. This one goes to Astro Orbiter. This is the pilot wings of a spaceship high of the attraction here in Tomorrowland. This is definitely a great view to have a best look of airtime that definitely has you down. Once you're on board for this rocket ship, you will start flying up here above. And this will definitely control you how high you want it to go. You don't have to go high if your kids don't want to do this. But you could definitely go do it even higher if you're alone. I mean, this is definitely gets interesting. When you take over the flight, you could see every land of Disney's Magic Kingdom, including the Magic Castle of Cinderella. And on the other side, you will see Space Mountain, Tron Light Cycle, and many, many more above the sky. This is definitely one of my best attractions here at Disney's Magic Kingdom, here part of the flat ride. And I'm really gonna tell you this one here, this was definitely that fast. You almost could definitely go even higher because if you really like to take it from here, they will tilt you. So don't be surprised if you definitely wanted to do this right on your own. But that's how high you really wanted to be. 
Astro Orbiter is definitely the best choice for me to get on this attraction. <laughs> I love it here too. Great scenic view. Definitely look around. There's definitely a lot of places. If you really like to go right to another attraction, if you want to be there, this is definitely fun for everybody who wishes to be there. And I mean it. Definitely be there, for sure. If your small kids want to say, let's go on the Astro Orbiter, and I would say, yay, we could definitely check out the scenic view. I would be impressed. So enjoy yourself and have kids go on this part of the flying jet pilot, or I would say space shuttle for sure. I got a little uh, in-between confusions out there, so don't worry about it. It's definitely the same thing, just like in the army of the Jet Nation crew. This is definitely a little bit different in between from flying a jet and space shuttle. But this turned out to be just like it happened. You're definitely gonna wanna get yours prepared because flying on the pilot to take the shuttle, you're gonna definitely enjoy what you would like to take high above the surface. That's really cool. Definitely tell that one here. You're gonna love that one. There's elevators too, so once they get you on the board, you will send up the elevator and you are gonna be at the top here on the second floor and you'll be entering this jet shuttle. Take your ride with you and definitely get on attraction and fly high. That's for your kids too to check out what they have. Entering in number four is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. This is definitely a one of a great ride here in this frontier land. Definitely on the entering note, but there, if you get into the cave and you see bats flying, spiders, I mean, they're definitely very that creepy to you on the start. But not for long, you will see the caverns inside here. This is definitely that nobody has ever seen it before, right there and there. Well, talk about that one here in between. But this is definitely a great attraction for the whole family to enjoy. I love the attraction how this turned out. Three lift hills. Not a joke, because this one does turn to be the same thing just like Disneyland does, but that has a mirror on the other end, and the different track section is a little bit different. So don't be complied, it's very that it's very different. And I'm not really gonna say that this really sunk me off, but this is definitely a great mind train that I'd like you to take. You should take in the middle row or the back row. That is the best choice, because front row gives a little slow off the hook. Don't be jealous. I'm really that kind of a best person who really likes to go from the back or middle row. Simply put, if you're on this attraction and you want to get in the middle or back row, it's the best spot to be placed in. But going back to this attraction, this was amazing. Ride to be on here like a lookout like you never did before. And again, into the station, this really does to be underground here where the trains come in and take you on board like you mean it. While the outdoor prevails from Disneyland's of California, this one's a very different range because you have to take down the stairs and then get on this attraction. That's definitely the different thing that nobody has ever seen. So Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is another trip to make your bucket list down. So make sure you have that one on your ride because if you do, you're gonna definitely be ready for anything. And I definitely tell you, it is a must do for all the thrill seekers, and especially with your family there too. So Big Thunder Mountain Railroad was a great ride. I like it so far. Heading into number three, it's a zippity doo da zippity a. Wow, oh my, what a wonderful ride on Splash Mountain. It's right next to this part of the Big Thunder Mountain, but not this one. This one has the drop of a log flume ride. Wow, I just got soaked. Look at that. A great picture to be in here to get soaking wet if you're definitely gonna have a fun time. But this time, this really does turn out to be a log flume ride in between from each amusement parks. But Splash Mountain? Wow, free dips on that one here, baby. I've just got a lot of things to tell you. The first drop was a small one, then the next one to a laughing place. I mean, this is very, very different. My goodness. <laughs> Talk about that one, like Ripsaw Falls, and definitely like that you never mean it. But this is not totally what we are going for. 
This is why the Splash Mountain turned out to be the best ride. Because you know, this one attraction has only three drops. The first two drops didn't get me wet. But this all has to be one thing at a time. I'm really expecting this is a great scene to be into this part of the mountain location. I really like that one. This is definitely a great scene to be in here from wood from time to time. Even, of course, your best favorite. But get out of the way because there is a fox there showing by. So don't be eaten alive if you see him taste the danger. Not the Zootopia one. That's a little different. You have to be on your own video. But going back from here from Splash Mountain, on this final drop, this is very big. Getting out of this laughing place, eh? I just really told you that it was very big. And then by the time it splashes down, you're in the tunnel and then you get soaked. Wow, I love that attraction so much. I got wet, I love to be wet. Even if they're on the sunshine, they get a lot wet. And from the how hot it is, I mean, this is very, very intense ride. I think your kids will get soaked there too. But if you're afraid of the drops, please just don't try to panic. You'll be fine. And I would definitely tell you, there are lap bars in there. So please be mindful just to keep your riders safe from protection. This is a recommendation for the ride if you're ready to take the soak this from the plunge from wetness of this ride. Splash Mountain is here for a zippity doo dah day for you and your whole family for sure especially friends or company. You're gonna definitely have yours prepared because it will be the wettest attraction on earth. Number two, this one is gonna take a one look of your dream. Collecting gems, not so easy, but this ride. It's the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train from Snow White. I like that attraction better because comparing it in between from the Big Thunder Mountain to the Mine Train ride. I mean, this is a little same, but different. This one has a standard train that doesn't swing back and forth, but the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train has a swinging feature, like an orphan rocker. This is very different. No joke. This is definitely my favorite part. The swinging moment, and it just leading you from side to side, in between the wave turns in between. I love that attraction so much. To tell you, be honest with you, I really like how this ride turned out in from the first hill and the second chain lift instead. For an instant on my point, I like how the scene turns out. The dwarfs take their gems and then they are off to do it again. I mean, the second lift hill plays a little great song. And definitely you could listen to it up there from Hi Ho for the song. Yeah, I'm definitely that serious for sure. And after this one, from the final part of a break, you will see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs taking an ending of this part of finale. What a celebration. And expecting that there is definitely a witch, but don't be fooled if you see an apple popping nearby. That's not my thing I wanted to eat for. But this is definitely a chance for the whole family to ride this attraction. I think you should be riding this one for you too. But this one was definitely my favorite part of the swinging element here. And I'm definitely liking this ride so far. This was the best. I like it that point. Haven't you? Well, you must do this on your own. You're going to definitely enjoy it what you really want to. And I like the way how it does turn out to be a swing of this part of a ride. A twisting of the turns and up from the bridges here. Great little moment air time in between and then from the final sections of the track to a finish. This is definitely a best ride. I really like it so far. I totally really like it so far and ever. Seven Dwarfs Mind Train will be definitely on your side if you're in for your time. All right, before we get into number one, let's take a look at the honorable mentions again that we didn't get to ride. First up is Haunted Mansion. This is a spine tingling tour of this darkness in the haunted house. I mean, there are so many monsters here taking a look in between from this part that you definitely do not see anything. But if you see some monsters popping nearby, I mean, this definitely might want to fear yours a bit. So you don't want to like try to like take advantage of it and then try to like 
get away with it. I mean, this is definitely the only attraction that has the Doom Buggies. Because this is very different than to take anywhere else from this ride. I mean, no offense. This really does happen to me sometimes. I went on it two times already. I try to avoid the scaredness, but I don't know what to say. Okay, Haunted Mansion, I think it's time for me to go. But if you have an experience that you wanted to enter, then enter if you dare. Next up is the People Mover at Tomorrowland. This is the only mass transit system that definitely takes you across here from tomorrow for the future of the world. There time, you will see somehow this creation does set up here from the train mover. Definitely, of course, taking the sight scenes of the view letting them on a train from the connection on the ground. This one on the higher transit train is definitely a little higher because you could take a great look here in Tomorrowland to see how this all turned out. This is very the same thing, just to tell as you're in a transit connection and definitely going from subway station than to get on with this people mover ride. I'm really sure that I would have taken the ride here to have a good view on the other hand too, plus the Tomorrowland Speedway of course on the bottom. But in its good case, you could definitely see the Tron light cycle right on your left. Well, the attraction is not open yet of this year, but next year it will be in 2023. And then you get into Space Mountain. It's very dark. You can't see anything inside. But this is very tough to take a closer look here. But if you see anything, you'll be out of darkness. And you may feel like, where in the world am I? I'm lost. And then after the Space Mountain, then they will take you to the Buzz Astro Orbiter right from the side across on the upper lot of a carousel of progress. And then in Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. That's a great scenic view here in between because there are a lot of people in there taking a dark rides to shoot. Well, I already did that one except I won't be uh, talking to this one again because I already passed that one. But anyway, People Mover is definitely your place to be on if you want to take a good view. Then this is must do here for the all people who really like to take a small break on the thrilling attractions. Must more than anything because I really do see that I wanted to give a good view. So, you must do is get on this attraction. You might have a great view in between the scenes. However, one more attraction here that we didn't get to is Tomorrowland Speedway. Now, I know what you're thinking. Tomorrowland Speedway is definitely the taking a ride of your hot rod. And when you get in the vehicle, you will definitely start taking a tour around from this Tomorrowland in between from the road and sightseeing of Tron Light Cycle. Well, that I really would have preferred that I would have ride this attraction even more to get on this rod vehicle. But not to worry about that one here, we didn't really want to take too much time with the effort. So I'm not going to try to take a commencement to this one, but it's definitely turned out to be just a small family attraction to ride on your vehicle. I mean, this definitely turns out to be great. So if you have your experiences, I think the driving technique could be your time to get in and then drive on your own in Tomorrowland from your speedway. This definitely reminds me, this one kind of like NASCAR, but this doesn't look like NASCAR. This is definitely like a pathway to lead around the circuit. And at the end, you'll be at the finish line and see how well driving you did. You might give you a driver's license for sure and passing a road test for me since I already took mine for two years ago in 2020. But not offensive on this one, there's definitely to be the honor of this Tomorrowland Speedway here for you. That's why I made this one an honorable mention. And now, ladies and gentlemen, number one is where we take in from this attraction. That's right, number one in this attraction, the most from Magic Kingdom is Space Mountain. My goodness, Space Mountain was definitely the best attraction here at Disney's Magic Kingdom. No joke. On the start, you will see how the lights are dimming up here to take a flash right in through space. I mean, no joke, I'll be honest with you. But this was very dark. 
I mean, look at that. This is definitely nothing that you want to get in this part of Space Mountain by yourself. But there are three vehicles per row and one seat. There are th one seat per row in each vehicle. I think this is definitely your time to shine in if you wanted to get on the attraction more. I'm really expecting that this is definitely my favorite part of this ride. Because you take on the dark for space and then take it around from the journey. This was a best favorite attraction ever yet. And from the air time of this hill, it's like, wow, that really just wanted to like push me up into it. No offense, it does look like that this attraction turned out to be great. And there are two sides. There's Alpha and Omega. I don't have to worry about which side do I want to go on, but they're totally the same. And one can be only being thing as a mirror from each part of a course. Yeah, talk about this attraction much more. I love this one so much. I don't know if my parents do really like this one, but this is very a little change off in between these zones. Space Mountain was just like so dark. You can't even see anything. But then when you feel something, you would definitely make a quick reaction to it. <laughs> that is cool. I like this Space Mountain. It definitely turned out to be a family attraction so much and flying from space to talk about how you really like to ride in space in the dark zone. You may not know where you are, but there might be a great thing that space shuttles have a good memorable thought. I gotta say, Space Mountain, kick it off, doing great. And maybe next time when I visit back here again, I will take a look at the Tron Light Cycle Run here at Magic Kingdom for sure. So that's about to cover up for the top 10 rides at Disney's Magic Kingdom. I did have a great time there and this is definitely the best land I really like to be here. Across from its nighttime spectacular from Cinderella Castle to Main Street and to other attractions in between the lands that I could definitely take a look at. Oh, and one more thing. Just the one thing I mentioned is the boat ride, Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, not really well enough, but this might be okay for me to give this one a ride. So, not really fantastic for sure, but just a little splash, that's it. But Splash Mountain was a little better than the Pirates of the Caribbean. What a great story tell I really like to see from those pirates. Definitely hoi hoi mateys, no Jolly Roger for sure, but this is definitely a great scene to have a look in between from your favorite pirates from the cast. This definitely that great. So what do you think of my top 10 rides at Disney's Magic Kingdom? Do you really like it? Which ride do you like the most in your favorite land of the Magic Kingdom? Be sure to leave a comment down here below and tell me which attraction do you like so far. So that is it. I'd like to thank you all for watching for this video of the Magic Kingdom Top Rides. And this was definitely the best place to be once more. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and definitely check out the last previous videos that I've done the top rides in each park. The Animal Kingdom one will be short. So yeah, I have nothing else to say about that one here. But back from the other years, it will be. So yeah, stick around later here for Animal Kingdom. That will be the next one on the list here. Instead of top 10, this will be top 5 five of the attractions here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. There's not a lot to say about this one, but that might be the only thing where it has to be here so far. So with that one, thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a comment down here below if you'd like to see some more videos, or if you'd like to check out my previous other videos, click them right here. I'm also on a social media here. Be sure to find me on Instagram and TikTok. So that is it. And I'll see you all again very soon. Peace out everyone for a while as the Magic Kingdom Top Ride Dial. This is Chris from Son of Beast signing out and thank you all for tuning in. See you real soon. Somebody will.